Trump is mad. And let me tell you why. You guys know everybody's been talking about Jasmine, right? From the D, the Democrats. And recently, the Dems, they didn't have anybody. It has been boring over there. But when I tell you Jasmine and how Jasmine have been sticking it to Marjorie Green Taylor, you guys know, which is Trump's puppet. Behind the scenes, they are saying Trump is upset at Jasmine. And he's really upset because how he keep, she keeps on destroying Marjorie Green Taylor. He never had anybody that could step up to Marjorie the way that Jasmine is. And he's seeing how people are gravitating towards Jasmine. And they say he does not like it. So I don't know if he's going to bring out another person or what. But I got to let you guys hear this article because it talks more in detail about it. And you guys need to hear this. If you guys are new to the channel, I am your host, Miss Gigi. And I ask you guys to please make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe so I can put more of this content in because we need to know what is really going on. I am deep diving and I'm finding out so much information about these political leaders. Check this out. Uh, been found liable of sexual assault. That's who she has respect for. That's who, someone who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Not someone that earned his money, but someone who was given his money. That's who she... Looks like we're diving into another politically charged showdown, folks. Today, we're breaking down a no-holds-barred conversation featuring the indomitable representative Jasmine Crockett on Jessica Denson's Lights On. If you've ever wanted to see a masterclass in calling out hypocrisy and standing up for what's right, stick around. This episode has it all. Takedowns, truth bombs, and even a surprise musical guest. Jessica Denson kicks off the conversation by asking Crockett about the recent monumental conviction of Donald Trump. Crockett doesn't hold back. She emphasizes the significance of this historic verdict, framing it as a crucial step towards holding the powerful accountable of our major parties um, knows the character of the individual that literally will not just be the leader of the United States, but the leader of the free world. And they still decide that this is the way that they want to go. It tells you that this party has absolutely shifted and not shifted for the better. But It's clear from her tone that she views this as more than just a legal victory. It's a win for justice and democracy. Denson then steers the discussion towards Marjorie Taylor Greene's latest antics, specifically her recent disrespect towards Dr. Anthony Fauci during a committee meeting. Crockett's response is scathing and spot on. It's two wrongs. Now y'all know. It ain't. <laughs> I mean, Marjorie is always at the center of it. She still has no idea of what decorum or respect looks like. She calls out Greene's chronic lack of respect. So before, people were trying to say, oh, they're both wrong, Jasmine, but it's not. It's always Marjorie, 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 Marjorie. She is a plant. They placed her there so she can start a lot of confusion, so she can start a lot of chaos. She is the agent of chaos, and they're planning on putting more plants just like her so they can wreak havoc, okay? And somebody needs to step up and stop them and confront them, and that person is definitely Jasmine. Respect, not just for Fauci, but for anyone who dedicates their life to public service. According to Crockett, Green's behavior isn't just unprofessional. It's a blatant display of her inadequacy and insecurity. She feels so threatened by people that are more qualified than she is, and that's what you're seeing is this acting out because she's not qualified to be in Congress. I don't care what anybody says. When asked about Green's refusal to call Fauci doctor, Crockett doesn't mince words. But, you know, to disrespect, um, you know, Dr. Fauci is just insane. Because here's the deal. I'm not saying you got to agree with him. You can disagree with him all day long. That is the beauty. She points out that Fauci has dedicated nearly 50 years to public health and has more than earned his credentials. Uh, right? But this is a man that dedicated I want to say almost 50 years of his life specifically to the U.S. government and absolutely earned his credentials. You need to respect it. This isn't just about a title. It's about recognizing and respecting a lifetime of service. 
Crockett's disdain for Green's antics is palpable, and she makes it clear that such disrespect is unacceptable. Crockett goes further, highlighting Green's sycophantic admiration for Donald Trump. And that she has any respect for is Donald Trump, a 34 count convicted felon, a fraudster who has defrauded um, people through his business, um, who's also uh, uh, been found liable of sexual assault. That's who she has respect for. This stark contrast underscores Green's misplaced priorities and values. Crockett is relentless pointing out that Green respects a man who was born into privilege and has a history of fraud and abuse, rather than someone who has genuinely earned their respect through hard work and dedication. Next, Denson asks about the broader implications of Green's behavior and how it reflects on her constituents. Crockett suggests that even Green's constituents should reconsider their support for her. The reason her constituents should look at her and say, she doesn't respect the institution at all and she is tearing it apart. We should just vote her out, even if it means voting for a Democrat and then going back and voting for a normal Republican. But she never ever has to answer for her consequences. She argues that Green's disrespect for the institution of Congress is tearing it apart. Crockett urges voters to consider the long-term damage Green is causing and to vote her out, even if it means supporting a Democrat temporarily. Crockett isn't just about calling out bad behavior. She's also about accountability. She notes that Green rarely faces consequences for her actions, which only emboldens her further. However, Crockett recalls her own confrontation with Green, highlighting it as a rare instance where Green faced real backlash. It's a powerful reminder that standing up to bullies can make a difference. Then, Denson introduces a surprise guest, Tennis. Yes, yes, it is, uh, it does make a difference. Marjorie is a bully. And when I tell you that bleach, bleach blind, bad built, wide back body, honey, she had to keep on hearing that and hearing that. And she, it ate at her so bad. Did you know that she came out with a Photoshop body picture of her on her birthday? Marjorie, the agent of realness, the agent of natural, is using Photoshop? Come on now. Yeah, she felt that. They had checked her at the, uh, the airport and everything, honey. She felt that. Because nobody never stuck it to her. And it's about damn time. Tennessee Brando, a country artist who went viral with his song inspired by Crockett's encounter with Green. Brando's song cleverly critiques Green's behavior, and Crockett's reaction is both delighted and appreciative. As the conversation wraps up, Crockett reflects on the overwhelming global response she received after her encounter with Green. I think that Marjorie thought if anybody came to my defense or if anybody got involved, it would only be black people. And the, the, the reality is that the entire world. Yes, the entire world is going to stand up for right. We are all in this fight together, white, black, Latino. Hey, these megas want us all gone and divided and separated so they can have control and wreak habits, okay? So I love everybody out there. I truly do. Let's continue. World. Literally, I've gotten messages from across the world, but like the entire world. She acknowledges the messages of support from around the world, emphasizing that Green's despicable behavior resonated globally. Crockett's reflections are a powerful reminder of the impact one person's stand for justice can have. Kind of how despicable of a person she is. And like you said, you were waiting on the song title. Like she is yeah. somebody that people have literally just been like, why and how is she a part of our system? Um, With my FICO, I get easy access to credit reports, 24 seven monitoring and alerts. For um, and so, yeah, it's great. For those of you who don't know, here's what happened between Representative Jasmine Crockett and Marjorie Taylor Greene. The confrontation erupted during a House Oversight Committee meeting where members were deciding whether to hold Attorney General Merrick Garland in contempt of Congress for not providing Republicans with audio recordings of President Joe Biden's interview by Special Counsel Robert Herr. The explosive hearing had been building up for a while and it was only a matter of time before Marjorie Taylor Greene's penchant for dramatic theatrics against her colleagues was captured live on CS Pan 
instead of merely being witnessed by bystanders. Green's personal vendettas often devolve into petty name-calling and childish outbursts that derail the government's work. She manages to get away with it because House Republican leadership continually coddles and excuses her behavior, much like a parent dreads the prospect of a public tantrum. During the hearing, Green went off topic, demanding to know if any Democrats were collaborating with the daughter of Judge Juan Merchant, who is overseeing Trump's ongoing criminal trial. Crockett immediately challenged her, asking, please tell me what that has to do with Merrick Garland. Do you know what we're here for? You know we're here about A.G. Garland? Green, rather than addressing the question, took a personal jab, sneering that Crockett's fake eyelashes are messing up what you're reading. This was clearly an attempt to belittle Crockett, but only highlighted Green's lack of decorum. After Green's attacks on Crockett and Ocasio-Cortez, Republicans on the committee voted to reject two attempts to have her comments removed from the record. That's when Crockett stepped in, posing a hypothetical question to Republican committee chair James Comer that included an indirect dig at Green. I'm just curious, just to better understand your ruling. If someone on this committee then starts talking about somebody's bleach blonde, bad built butch body, that would not be engaging in personalities, correct? Comer's confusion was evident and fellow committee Republicans demanded that Crockett's words be stricken from the record, turning the debate into an uncontrolled shouting match. Crockett, undeterred, declared, y'all talk noise, and then you can't take it. Representative Jasmine Crockett has zero regrets about her heated exchange with Representative Marjorie Taylor. And she shouldn't have any regrets. We all gotta keep an eye on this situation. Trump, Marjorie, Jasmine, Honey, stuff is boiling and it's about to overflow. Do you understand? All right, so comment, let us know. Did you guys enjoy that video? If you have, make sure you like this video. Make sure you comment, okay? And I will see you guys on another upload.